our triumphs together with people that, you know, really understand exactly what you go through too. And the instructors were great, and it was it was a really good time of was refreshed and encouraged um, coming back from that. Um, but that's pretty much all my training is now over, so I I'm done with all the training aspects, and I can can go to um, Honduras here pretty soon. A little bit about Honduras is um, it is the second poorest country in Latin America, Nicaragua being the first and their neighbors. Um, it's home to over 7.8 million people. Over one and a quarter million of those live in the capital city of Tegucigalpa, which is up there on the map. And 40% of the population of Honduras is 14 and younger. And when I read that statistic, I was like, no way, that can't be right. As, and I looked at it again, and I was like, wow. Because to me, being in children's ministry and that being pretty much the, the target age range that we work with and that we you know, strive to evangelize and, and be involved with and disciple, to me, that is huge because you could change the next generation. You can change the future of the country through the children. Um, it's a very religious country. It's, um, most of people will tell you they're Roman Catholic. And, the adults, though, they don't understand the difference between just the tradition that they've grown up with and the actual relationship with Jesus Christ. And so that's hard to try to, I mean, they'll listen to you share the gospel, but they have a hard time understanding that they need that relationship with God. And so for me, it's really exciting to be involved with the children's ministry where they can really know the truth of the gospel, um, that they need to have a relationship with God before they, I guess, just grow up in, in tradition and, and don't really and then it's harder for them to change. So that to me is really exciting, um, doing what I do and just the impact it can have on, on the country. CEF is a worldwide organization. It has a uh, ministry in over 176 different countries around the world. Um, and the purpose of CEF is to evangelize boys and girls with the word of God, to disciple them in the local church, and then, or to disciple them in the Word of God and to also establish them in a local church so they can continue to grow and they continue to learn more about God and they can begin to, you know, use their, the gifts God has given them and just be encouraged by other Christian believers. Um, so we, we, we try to not just evangelize them and leave them to do whatever, but to work with local good Bible-believing, Bible-teaching churches um, so they can continue to grow in their faith as well. And so, CEF does have ministry already established um, in Honduras. It's kind of, the national office is in the capital city of Tegucigalpa, which, like I said, has over a quarter of, one and a quarter million people. And it's not a really spread out city, though. When I was there, it was kind of, they kind of build up, up the mountainsides and things. So it's not, it doesn't look that big from, from, the outside, but it's, there's a lot of people there. And this is Alta Gracia Lagos. She is the national director for CEF. She will be like my boss when I'm down there. And she's a really nice lady. I got to meet her and, and talk with her a little bit. Um, very passionate about the ministry, very excited about what CEF is doing down there um, and just the ministry that's going on. Some of the things that they do is they have teacher training. This is a picture of a, you can't see it very well, but it's a uh, teaching preschoolers class that they held. They held to have different trainings for adults that work with kids, um, either in their churches or in their, you know, neighborhoods, things like that. Because a lot of the teachers, they love reaching kids and they're excited about it, but sometimes they can get a little discouraged, a little worn out, and with some training and some new helps and ideas, they're really excited to get, it and to get back to it and go, go with it. And, um, so they just love the trainings. Um, so we have, this one was for, especially for preschool workers, but we have some that just kind of general ones on how to, you know, effectively share the gospel with kids or object lessons, just some songs or game ideas you can play with them, just a lot of different things um, that they can do with, with the kids that they reach. They also have Camp Good News which I was able to go then January, this, this January, past January, I was able to go to Honduras for two weeks, kind of a pre-trip for my you know, long-term ministry there to get to know the country a little bit, get to know the people and the workers um, in CEF there. And I got to help out with Camp Good News, and it was a lot of fun. We had probably at least 150 
kids that came to camp, um, plus the staff and things. And several of them made professions of uh, faith in Christ while we were there. And it was just so exciting to see pretty much all of the counselors at Camp Good News uh, grew up going to camp. And you can really see their passion for the kids and just the life impact it had on them and how they want to have that same impact on the kids that now come to camp. And it was, it's just really, really um, infectious, I guess, their passion and their love for the, for the kids that come to camp. We had a lot of fun. We talked about walking according to the spirit as opposed to walking according to the flesh and what that looks like and how that should be lived out in the Christian life. Um, a lot of the kids don't come from Christian homes, though, so it was interesting to see them begin to change a little bit over the week in how God was working in, in each one of their lives. And um, at the end of the week, we had a, a bonfire, and one of the, the guy staff leaders shared his story about how he used to be involved with, in gangs and, and how God had brought him out of that. And one of the boys in his cabin had, was involved in, in a gang. And so it was neat to see how God had brought them together so that this leader could, you know, help him and, and, and be involved in his life and counsel him and encourage him that th that wasn't the only option for his life. He could choose a different path. And at the end of the, at the, end of the camp week, it, during the bonfire, the young man stood up and said how, you know, he learned so much at camp and from his leader about God and how this probably wasn't what God wanted for his life, you know, and how he needed to change. And so at, at, right there in front of all, all the campers and all the staff, he threw his um, gang t-shirt into the, into the bonfire as a testimony of how, you know, with God's help, he was going to change and he was going to follow a, a better path for his life. And so those stories like that are so encouraging and so exciting that, that, CF is having an impact in the lives of boys and girls down there in Honduras. Um, and then we also have five-day clubs, which is kind of like a vacation Bible school, only on a smaller scale. A lot of times it's held in somebody's house or just in the neighborhood, on a park somewhere. Um, but they can also take the same thing and do a VBS at a church or something. And so they reach a lot of kids doing that during the summertime, and it's a really exciting ministry. The biggest ministry that CEF has in Honduras are the Good News Clubs. Um, here in the States, a Good News Club is held after school um, because you can't obviously teach it during school hours because uh, you're teaching the Bible and all that. But in Honduras, it's a little bit different. They have a, like a religion class as part of their school, normal school day classes. And so the workers with CEF will ask them, hey, can we teach this class? You know, we teach the Bible. This is who we are. It's what we do. And a lot of times the, the school will let them. They'll be like, sure, you guys can come and teach it. That's no problem. And so they, last I heard, they were reaching over 15,000 kids each week um, just with the Good News Clubs in the schools. And um, it's really exciting to hear stories of lives changed. It, it takes a little bit, you know, because they have a lot of questions. You know, well, this is, this is what I see my mom and dad do, or this is what everyone else does, but you're saying this about, you know, the gospel. So which is it, you know, and so it's, they ask a lot of good questions, and it's really encouraging to see, you know, God work in their lives and see them come to Christ as well. Um, this ministry um, is the Christian Youth in Action. Like I mentioned, how I first got involved with CEF. This is, this January, they had their first ever Christian Youth in Action training in Honduras, only it's called Youth with Vision there. And we had nine students come from two different churches that partnered with our training. And four of them had been counselors at Camp Good News the week before. They grew up in Camp Good News. And, and so it was fun to get to know them a little bit better and see their passion for reaching kids also. But we had a really, really good time. Um, there was three of us that taught the, the week-long sessions and the classes. And they were a lot like me when they first came. They thought, I don't know what they thought it was going to be like, but they got there, and like halfway through the week, they, they said to us, they said, man, if we don't know how much work this was going to be, we wouldn't have come. But they all had a good time, and they really enjoyed it, even though it was a lot of work. They spent a lot of time studying. Um, but they learned how to teach a Bible lesson and how to share the gospel using the wordless book. Um, they learned how to share the gospel um, 
like hand painting the, the, with the colors of the wordless book. 